this chapter is called Building Business Intelligence. It's really talking about big data and big data analysis, and it's kind of a follow-up to the presentation that I gave using my own slides last week. This vintage 2015 PowerPoint from the textbook is showing its age a little bit, if you ask me. So if we understand what business intelligence is, it's that very idea, and it's separate from most IT functionality. It's taking that mountain range of data and making actionable information that you can learn something from it and then take action based on what you've learned. So it's different than all the IT kinds of stuff like master data management, information architecture, the quality of the data, and data integration. Well, the quality of the data obviously makes it uh, easier to rely on the information that you've gleaned from it. The architecture makes it easier to manipulate the data. I'm not sure what they mean by an evolving ecosystem around data vision. You know, it's one of those sentences where I understand all the words, but uh, the sentence is eluding me a little bit. I think what they're trying to say is that as we learn more about big data and data analysis and business intelligence, we're constantly evolving what we can and cannot do with it. Some decisions that we make will be deterministic. In other words, we will find out that if this, that, and the other thing happens, this will be the result. That's a deterministic. We found out if I drop a piece of, uh, if I drop a ball, it will fall to the ground. If the surface is hard enough, the ball will bounce. If it's not, it won't. That's kind of deterministic thinking. If I'm trying to make projections or predictions and it evolves, involves the future, then we're trying to make a forecast, or what they call predictive analytics, which is a little bit harder to do because no one is really good at predicting the future. I don't care how good they say they are. If I was good at it, I would be a billionaire 10 times over by now, I suppose. So clearly, I'm not good at it. So you have to look at maybe what they're talking about here is that organizational ability to bring the right data information knowledge and intelligence to bear on a business problem opportunity or decision i think it's an ecosystem that's already evolved and there are people getting master's degrees in used to be just big data and analytics now they're getting master's degrees in specific parts of it data architecture data engineering data analysis all of these things so how does it help organizations? Well, you can anticipate the future instead of reacting to the past. Again, if it's deterministic, you can act with more power. If it's predictive, it's as good as any forecast. Um, you empower employees' memory and insight. Well, it's always the case. I mean, think about just a simple application of big data. LinkedIn. I have 500 plus contacts. I don't know, maybe a thousand contacts now. Probably 300 of them I know really well. 200 or 300 I'm acquainted with. And uh, the balance I'm really not uh, well acquainted with at all. But there are connections that looked interesting or found me interesting. I cannot remember where all these people worked. But LinkedIn does that for me. It gives me insight that I didn't have. Let's say I'm looking for someone that worked at, uh, I don't know, let's say Kroger, which is the parent company of Mariano's in Chicago. I can't remember that for all my connections who might have worked there or all my connections connections, but LinkedIn has the ability to do that. So this is the kind of insight and memory we're trying to give us that kind of a virtual memory that we don't have. We can sense what's happening in the organization's environment, externally and internally. We can connect internal and external functions and resources. 
We can question the status quo and create new opportunities. We can focus on the most relevant information. All of that can be done. So you have data. We talked about that. Transaction data, internal structured data, internal unstructured data. Remember the difference between structured and unstructured? We're uh, organized by files and key elements. And unstructured are like photos and emails and who knows what. External structured data, master data, external unstructured data, real-time data. I don't have much experience with real-time data because it's like what's trending right now. It's like almost in, in, in Yahoo or Google if you were to use uh, some kind of, you know, look at what's the, the top 10 things people are searching right now. So that would give you a sense of what's hot. If you were some sort of marketer that re relied on that and you could change on a dime the focus of some of your marketing, you would take advantage of this. Master data is, I think, your, your data that supports. It's not external data. It's internal data for the most part. And it's what guides your transaction data. So you turn that into information management. You have information management strategy and principles. You have an enterprise information architecture, uh, metadata, which is uh, data about data, uh, data management, data integration, data quality, data administration. That's how you manage it. But really, you're trying to massage it. You're trying to slice and dice all of this data here to get to to this point where you can make some reports, you can make dashboards, you use data mining, I would put data mining in the data information part. Information enhanced processes, uh, if you have better insights you can change the way you do things. I think queries go here. Uh, graphics and visualization is certainly intelligence creation. Uh, Real-time analysis, I don't know, it gets a little fuzzy. It's kind of good that it gets darker as you go down here because I, I'm not information enhanced products and services. Yes, all of this. Anything that you think you could use big data to get insights for and how to predict and and help people buy more stuff, be it products or services from your company, would be an advantage. We talked about the explosion of data in the last presentation. I'm not going to talk about it much here because we've already talked talked a lot about it changing information needs. Well, the whole purpose of ERP systems is to have all the data that you have and therefore possibly all the information that could be generated from that data at your fingertips. Uh, so it's important that it can happen faster is better. Competitive analysis or competitiveness, excuse me, organizations that are sophisticated explorer, exploiters of data and analytics are three times more likely to be top performers. Okay, that's a quote from someone. Let's say that. If I'm better at doing this than you, and we're both operating in the same market, I should have an advantage over you. Perspective. Oftentimes, as human beings, wonderful as we may be, the ability to synthesize data is amazing in our little brains, our big brains. Um, we have mindsets. We have organizational cultures and mindsets regarding how things were always done. Data breaks all ties. Information breaks ties. If you think, you know, it doesn't surprise, it shouldn't surprise you that some long-held beliefs may not be true, and data will finally prove that out. I think of the example of ulcers. For the longest time of, uh, when I was growing up, people thought ulcers were the result of stress. There was a doctor who decided it was a bacterial infection in the stomach. I think most people thought bacterial infections couldn't exist in the stomach because of the acid. So these has to be acid resistant um, bacteria, but they live there and cause infections in the stomach, treated with some antibiotics, the ulcers went away. This guy could not get the medical community in the entire world to see what he was trying to do. 
even when he presented them with data. So people's mindsets and cultures and long-held beliefs are hard to change. A lack of business knowledge. You know, this whole concept of we don't know what we don't know. And it's difficult to be perceptive about business intelligence without a full range of knowledge. Well, you're never going to have a full range of knowledge, but mining that mountain range of data and turning it into information is probably better than anything you had before. So you're never going to have complete information, especially if you're trying to predict the future, which is called forecasting. But this is a good start. Lack of sponsorship. In spite of demand for the, this better information, some businesses have been slow to invest in it. This is 200, 2015 thinking. Uh, most executives that see the value of it have probably already invested in it. They may expect more than you think you can get out of it. I think we're going to probably shortly run into the limitations of what we can get. It's not complete magic. It's just giving you a giant step or 10 giant steps more information than you had before. And then this idea of silo thinking. It's not very far from changing organizational mindsets and culture. Manufacturing and sales can be the closest allies in the world or they can be adversaries. So oftentimes uh, I think big data helps crush that if you use the information to make better decisions and enhance communication between two siloed entities. So what they're saying is this thing has been exacerbated by the lack of governance and enterprise perspective and has resulted in fragmentation and duplication of data. So it's again, this is really tied to this perspective bullet point in the previous slide. And lack of skills. Well, guess what? This takes a little bit of statistics. If you're taking massive amounts of data and slicing and dicing, what does slicing and dicing actually mean? It means doing some mathematical arithmetic manipulation. It has to do with some clustering and categorization. And if you don't know anything about statistics, if you don't know anything about data management and data manipulation, if you don't know Python, if you don't know R, which are almost required one or the other to do big data analysis, you lack the skills to be able to do it and you won't be able to see the forest for the trees or the trees for the forest or however it is we're trying to do right here. So what's the role of IT in all of this? It's They're involved in a strategy and planning for sure. It's an in-between function. The people that are assigned the data analytics and business analytics and business intelligence have to work closely with IT because they have to understand how all the data is structured. They t tend to take that data that's stored and accumulated over time and manipulate it further. In some places where I've seen is that data gets dumped because when companies run, they're taking sales order there's, and they're processing the orders, they're doing their billing, they're receiving checks, they're paying uh, suppliers, they're paying employees, they're paying all their bills. Uh, and all of this, they're doing their financial accounting, they're doing managerial accounting, and all of these things on a day-to-day -day transactional basis. The data that's accumulated is oftentimes put into a storage location that is then accessible from by these business analytics and business intelligence people. And so they're not necessarily messing with the day-to-day -day transactional data, but trying to take the results of all of that and being able to answer questions that are posed of them. I've seen a friend of mine who works for, used to work for Miller Coors, and they've done some significant analytic work about which beers sell where and when you know, during parts of the year. And if this beer sells, they figure that they could probably launch this brand or emphasize this brand there and make more money, et cetera, et cetera, all these things. So this is what people are trying to get from this. And 
IT is involved in setting up that database and maintaining the database from which all business intelligence and analytics works. Once the analytics and intelligence people are done, they can rerun their program all the time if it's valuable that they've written in Python or R from the data lake or data cube, as you might call it, or if it's something that is actually applicable on a transactional side, you can add that functionality, that day-to-day, moment-to-moment reporting in your transactional live version of your ERP. Uh, data acquisition and, and management. Well, the holy grail of IT is to have a single authoritative source of all data. A duplicate data, multiple data marts, and inflexible data warehouse cannot incorporate new forms of data. So this is the, the idea of where this lake comes in. You have your structured, that's almost, in this latter case, it was all structured data. And if you're going to try to include unstructured data in it. I know that if I uh, search for a student's name, uh, let's say it's uh, something as innocuous, innocuous as Sue Jones, and I type it in my search, just in my iPhone, uh, it will give me, if I've saved her contact, it will provide that. If I have emails from her, it will give me access to all the emails from her. If I have texts from her, it will give me access to all the texts from her. So I'm really taking this intelligence and, and doing something else. If I then search for her, if she's a friend of mine in LinkedIn, it might show that as well. So this, um, we want to have all the data that's necessary to kind of make the decisions in that single authoritative source of all data. Sometimes it's a lake because the lake combines structured and unstructured data. Information management. Well, how do you manage this information? How do you slice and dice it? How, what are the tools that you use? So you have this giant warehouse of data, this giant mountain range of data that's, or lake of data or whatever you want to call it, where all the data that you need is kind of in, available to you. You have things like Python and R, which help you manipulate it. In fact, I don't have to put all my external data into the lake. If I have access to external data, I can augment it into, I can pull the data I need from my own system. And if I have the data, access of data from an outside source, I can pull that data into Python or R and put the two data sets together, matching it by certain criteria, if that's appropriate. So these powerful tools exist to operate on one or many sources of internal and external data. Now the intelligence delivery is not only in the slicing, dicing, statistical analysis, regression analysis, looking for relationships, be they predictive relationships, inferential relationships, or cogn you know, um, deterministic relationships, mm -hmm. but the presentation of such also. How do you slice and dice the data and present it in such a way that people can see, ah, I get it. Here is that nugget of information that we need that gives insight into this, and uh, we can then make a decision. Should we act on this, and how should we act on it? That's what you're trying to get people to see. And is this something we want to see every day? every week, every month, every six months, once a year. So how do you improve business intelligence? We obviously you learn from the past. Um, how do people use, utilize knowledge for action? And then how do they, what knowledge could they have used to make better decisions? What information could they have used to make better decisions? 
and start incorporating that into the system. Uh, as in anything, I mean, my background is in quality. I can't emphasize this slide. Uh, it's just in my DNA. Have a strategy for continuous improvement. You should get better at it all the time. And what is better at it all the time? If you find a lot of errors in your data, let's put a continuous improvement program in to improve the quality of our data and our data management. If uh, we're finding out that we're getting a lot out of clustering and cluster analysis and uh, regression, well, let's teach more people about that so we don't have to have only five people in a company that really know how to do this on any large scale. Uh, do we have people that can display the data well using um, tools like Tableau and other uh, graphic information display applications? Well, let's teach more people to do it. And it's, it does what needs to be part of more people's everyday work so they can do their own little mini analytics themselves and what needs to be centralized. Who has access to the data? Who doesn't? Well, focus. Um, usually, the focus should come from, especially at the beginning, from higher level management asking questions that then data analytics professionals in their departments or in some central location then go and spend some time and try to decipher the mountain range of data into the actionable information to help this executive make better decisions in the area they were looking at. So here it says their initiatives are challenging, therefore a clear focus on targeted difficult points where BI can make a difference is essential. It's not like you can use it everywhere all the time for anything. Let's use it judiciously because sometimes it takes some time to really dig in and get answers. Um, what they're saying here, I guess Roberts and Meehan in 2010, successful initiatives take a relentless focus on very limited set of burning business questions to guide the BI-enabled decision with maximum impact. I'm sure that was the case in 2010 and maybe in 2015. I think we're past that now to a certain degree and more where it maybe it's been rolled out to more parts of the organization. Uh, Cross-functional governance. Um, we're talking about data governance and business intelligent governance. I don't know, as they say, it's central to BI success. Well, you want to make sure that anybody that needs to and has the wherewithal to manipulate data should be able to do that. If it's um, if they're messing around in the system and changing the data, this can't be allowed. It can't be allowed in a transactional part of an ERP. It can't be allowed in a data storage, mountain range storage of that data. So you have to govern who's who has the need to know what and who has access to what information or not. I don't think that ever goes away. Usually, if you're in a central data analytics department, you probably have access to a whole heck of a lot of data. You probably can't change the data, but usually what happens is you download the data that you want. Then you can manip manipulate the living daylights out of it as you see fit. So you have to acquire new IT and analytics skills. Well, I think people have been doing that and have done that. And in... The couple years that this is the first summer out of the last three, uh, this year included, that we're not having a topics and a data analytics course. From year one to year two, it was amazing because I taught this with my friend that uh, co-taught it with my friend that worked at, worked at Miller Course. She's no longer there. And just the change in the industry from 2017 to 2018 to 2019, so wait, it was 2018 to 2019, was huge. We were emphasizing one software, R, all the time. Next year, she's emphasizing Python all the time. I almost 
uh, hesitate to think what she might be emphasizing this year. I don't work in the field, so I'm not privy to it. Um, well, take process views. The key to focus, <laughs> to, to success is focus on processes that really matter to the business. Well, again, from my background in quality management, total quality management, everything is a process view. And you should be looking at the processes that can have the most impact on the company. Move from the inside out. Well, in 2015, when they wrote this, business intelligence is still maturing and should be implemented as an experimental approach. Well, if you've never done anything, this is the way to do it. Try it. See if it has some benefit for you. And then it can grow organically rather than as a one-time initiative. You want to build these skills. It was a new skill five years ago. It's not so new a skill now. You can go out and hire talent. You can go out and hire an executive that can come in at a director or VP level and put this analytic, put the business intelligence department together. And if managed properly, you should be able to get results out of it faster than the, the let's try it experimentally and grow it organically over time. <coughs> well, storytelling is huge. If people start seeing, hey, listen, we never knew this, and we put this data together, and we did this, blah, 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 and oh boy, look at the results that came out of it, and then we implemented the, the results of this uh, deterministic relationship that we saw, and sales grew 4% uh, across the board. Well, that's going to spread like wildfire, and someone's going to say, well, how can we do that to save costs in our area? How can we do that to improve revenues in my area? How can we do this, that, and the other thing? So uh, access to intelligence is not enough. Managers need practical wisdom to make prudent judgments. Who is still making the decision? The human beings. The uh, information and information systems are guiding you. They're guiding you. You're not their slave. They're not telling you what to do. If it doesn't make sense, you've got to kick the tires. And you've got to have enough wisdom to know, ooh, I kicked the tires and they were right. Or I kicked the tires and guess what? We focused a little bit on the wrong thing. And when I changed that focus and definition of what we're trying to analyze, I got better results. So it's not a new idea but it's one that's changing dramatically. And we haven't even talked about the application of artificial intelligence here because that's where everybody thinks it's going to really take off like crazy. So the holistic view is it includes both IT foundations of data and information management. But I think we have to say that there is a almost a separate entity or class of employee that then takes that data and acts on it. And IT has, I don't know if they're taking the leadership role in it or not, but they definitely have to be involved. Again, like all, everything that we've talked about is IT and business. So it's got to be a partnership. And it's, you got to have some people, as Walt Disney would say, on the team that know what the heck they're doing. So you need people that are good statisticians, good data engineers, good um, manipulators of Python and R as programming languages to be able to to do the slicing and dicing that you want. Thank you very much and we'll talk again soon.